Hey, welcome to Nourishable Raw, an authentic conversation about nutrition with me, Dr. Lara. Today is February 26th of 2019, and I've been thinking about acrylamide in food. But first, what is acrylamide anyways? Acrylamide is a chemical that naturally forms when starchy foods are cooked at a high temperature through the Maillard reaction. When heated, sugars will bind with protein building blocks to produce acrylamide. This causes the browning of your toast and also contributes some tasty flavors. Acrylamide is also in potato chips, french fries, coffee, and crackers. And in addition to food, acrylamide can be inhaled through cigarette smoke and is also used in some industrial processing, so there can be some occupational exposures too. You're probably eating some acrylamide every day. I had some for breakfast with my coffee and toast. Since humans are constantly being exposed to acrylamide, it's important to figure out if it's unsafe. A few organizations around the world have been starting to make cancer warnings and recommendations about foods that contain acrylamide. A judge in California ruled that coffee has to carry a cancer warning because it contains acrylamide, and the European Food Safety Authority has launched a campaign educating how consumers can reduce their exposure to dietary acrylamide. But where does this concern come from? Animal studies in mice and rats exposed to acrylamide in their drinking water have shown that acrylamide causes many types of cancer. But we know the old saying, the dose makes the poison. How much acrylamide do you need to eat to cause cancer? And this is the really tricky part. We have no human data indicating how much acrylamide would cause cancer in people. So the European Food Safety Authority derived a value based on those animal studies. Specifically, they came up with a dose of 0.17 milligrams of acrylamide per kilogram of body weight per day. This value comes from the incidence of tumors in the Hardarian gland of mice. The Hardarian gland produces a lubricating fluid for the nictitating membrane in animals, also known as that creepy third eyelid that your dog has. Humans don't have a Hardarian gland. Plus, we know that mice aren't men, and rodents metabolize acrylamide differently than people. But this is where that value comes from. This value is around 85 times higher than our estimated exposure to acrylamide in food. So if you were a 70 kilogram person, you'd have to eat 68 pounds of potato chips to get this dose. Plus, there has been no association found between dietary acrylamide and nearly any type of cancer in analyses that have compiled all of the population studies done to date. How do we use this information? And should you be worried that your morning coffee and toast is gonna to give you cancer? If you wanna know something, measure it. So monitoring the acrylamide content of food and our human exposure to it could be important. We know that the dose makes the poison. Since there hasn't been much of a link found between dietary acrylamide and cancer, and the concerning human dose was derived from mouse cancer in an organ that people don't have, the best data we have right now to me indicates that the risk isn't all that relevant. Though reducing potato chip consumption is always a good idea. In the overall scheme of things that can give us cancer, I think that focusing on acrylamide from food is drawing attention away from other much more important lifestyle factors that have a strong evidence base for modulating cancer risk. Physical inactivity, diets low in fruits and vegetables, obesity, and smoking are all factors that increase cancer risk. That's what science tastes like. Thanks for tuning in to Nourishable Raw. If you have a question you'd like me to do an episode on, leave it in the comments below and be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all things nutrition.